given this lack of uh, certainty in many areas, how do I ascribe value to a mining project? It's useful to look at uh, Georges Agricola, speaking in 1556, who wrote that it is important that a careful owner, before buying shares, should visit a mine and to be on his guard to avoid being the victim of dishonest sellers seeking to defraud him. That's 500 years ago. Things have not changed at all. Agricola, in 1556, enunciated uh, the whole intent of a competently performed valuation. These valuations underpin all investment decisions. The valuation is an independent determination of the market value of a mineral asset. Market value is important. It's something different to the net present value ascribed to the cash flow model. The market value is what that asset could reasonably be expected to attain when offered on the open market. The Singapore Stock Exchange listing rules require valuations for pretty much any transaction on that exchange. Legal and financial institutions and mining companies require valuations in order to finance their projects. In the case of financial institutions, in order to perform due diligence on those projects that they are investing in. All of these valuations must be prepared by specialists. This is defined by not only Singapore law and the Singapore Stock Exchange listing rules, but by the definitions in the various professional codes associated with technical work in the mining industry. The Jork Code for Estimation of Resources and Reserves, the Valmin Code for the valuation of mining projects in Australia. South Africa, Canada has similar codes, SAMVAL, KIMVAL and the NI43101. The common factor to all these codes is that the specialist needs to demonstrate independence, have suitable qualifications and show competence in what they are doing. The components of value then are the technical value of the project. More often than not, this is the net present value implied by the cash flow model associated with that project. And remember the cash flow model is derived from the mine schedule which has inherent uncertainty attached to it. On top of this technical value, there may be a discount or a premium attached to it, which is related to the market's view of that particular commodity, that particular project at some point in time. At the moment, iron ore projects are trading at a significant discount. Three years ago, they were trading at a significant premium to the net present value implied by the financial models attached to those operations. So fair market value is the value that a willing buyer and willing seller in an arm's length transaction will uh, pay and receive acting knowledgeably, prudently and without compulsion, which is not the case. In most cases, uh, the seller is under duress, uh, usually for financial reasons, uh, to dispose of a particular asset. The buyer uh, may be overly um, optimistic about the prospects for that project. So the market premium or market discount is often difficult to gauge for any particular project. Returning to Agricola, in 1556, it's indispensable that miners should worship God with reference and should form and be convicted of fraud. They should be beaten with rods or of theft, they are to be hanged. These days we no longer engage in beatings and hangings. However, the criminal repercussions of fraud uh, and uh, misrepresentation in any jurisdiction relating to mining projects are severe. So if you get this wrong, you're going to go to jail. The Valmin Code uh, was in its current form formulated in 2005. Uh, I have been involved in uh, the drafting of 
uh, a new edition to be released this year in 2015. Uh, the original 2005 version is required by the Singapore Stock Exchange for public uh, disclosure. This is binding on me as a member of the Institute of Mining and Metallurgy. I must contemplate the guidelines in this code if I am engaged in any valuation work. In its current form, I'll comment that the Valmin Code is a very difficult document. Uh, it has served its purpose for the last 10 years, but the new draft is a significantly different structure uh, and in my view will serve the industry uh, more appropriately than the version uh, of 2005 has done in the past. In either case, the Valmin Code does not tell me how I am to value a project. I choose the method in which I value the project based on the purpose of that valuation, the development status of the asset, and the amount and reliability of the information that I am presented with. I will then look at the conditions surrounding the markets and commodities which I am valuing and modify my valuation accordingly. The, the Valmin Code also describes me as a competent person or a specialist and requires me to be independent and most importantly, I must provide a valuation range. For the analysts who may be listening, this is very important. Too many times I see valuation documents that provide a single value for a project. This immediately indicates to me that the valuer does not know what he is doing and is therefore not a competent person. The valuation range may, between, may be between, let's say, 100 and 130 million with a preferred value of 120 million and reasons for that preferred value being given. That is the correct way to express a mining project valuation. So remember when you're looking at these projects, look for a range. If a single value is given without explanation, then it is highly likely that the person preparing this document does not know what they are doing. Different valuation methods are recognised by professionals in the area. These are well described. If you have interest in the details on these techniques, I refer you to the Valmin website, which has links uh, to various documents that describe appropriate valuation methods. For very early exploration projects where a cash flow model might not be available, I will use more subjective techniques to value those projects, usually based on some dollar value per ounce of metal in the ground or per pound of metal in the ground or some dollar value per uh, square kilometre of project area uh, based on my view of its, pro its geological prospectivity. Once a project is in operation, and operating uh, costs and revenues are understood, then typically a net present value means of analysis will be applied. The most appropriate way to value a resource investment uh, is whatever provides a fair market value. Uh, as I've explained, there are a number of um, uh, techniques available to the uh, uh, competent professional valuer uh, and they'll be applied uh, in recognition of external market conditions. However, to an investor, perhaps the best approach is to look at uh, effectively competent, trans uh, um, uh, effectively uh, um, comparable transactions. Uh, look at what's happening in the marketplace around you for similar sized projects in that commodity uh, and uh, try and derive some kind of a value for the project in question from what you see occurring around you. Otherwise, uh, the simple answer to that question is telephone me and I'll give you a value. I'm actually quite cheap.